Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Psalms 115 verses 13. One, two, three, let's go. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. Next verse. The Lord shall increase you more and more when you choose. Repeat that verse, 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more. Read it one more time. Somebody shout amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Increase is a promise in God. It is not a society thing. It's not a tribal thing. It's not a family thing. It's not a national thing. It's not a connection thing. It's not an education thing. It is a promise thing. The Bible says the Lord shall what? Increase you more and more and the next line says and you and your children he has said this increase is not only for you but it's also for your children it's also for your children it's also for your children the lord will increase you the lord shall increase you not might shall not could shall, not may, shall, not will, shall increase you and your children. He shall increase you. That's a promise. That's a promise. That's a promise. Tonight I want to talk about the coming increase. Praise God. I want to talk about the what? The coming increase. When I was younger in the faith, I used to go to different places of ministry, churches, and I remember they used to teach us that, you know, when it comes to the gospel and the life of salvation and the spirit, there are certain people who God blessed, who will be blessed in their families, in their finances, in their health, in everything. They will increase. And then there are certain people who were not called for that kind of increase and so they'll live a very poor life but a god-fearing life they'll live a very unsuccessful and prosperous and increasing life because they're supposed to sacrifice themselves for the gospel and because of that they were just called to come live a sunny life struggle and suffer all through and then die and so we embraced it the doctrine and because of that when you go through decrease regression maybe you're among those ones god has not ordained to increase so you'd assume or oh, when things go the other way you'd say ah maybe i'm not among those ones whom god has called for this greatness and so by reason of that, Christians used to disqualify themselves from the promises of God, from the graces that I'm not saying that we are not supposed to sacrifice our lives for the gospel. We were called to that sacrifice. And some of us, by the time we came to stand on this altar, we were ready to die for what we believed. Any day. Any day. Any day. If a man would tell me, deny God and die, he would be wasting time. He knows I wouldn't. You understand what I'm saying? But in the sacrifice and the giving of my life also, there are promises. What am I to do with the same promises that I hear and am made in Christ? 
Are you following what I'm saying? So I'm not saying we would not die for the gospel if it required that men be saved. We would do that. Are you hearing me? But I'm talking about our consequential existence on the earth. God has promised certain results and answers for the believer. Are you following what I'm saying? And God has spoken that I shall increase you more and more you and your children. This is not only going to end on you, it's going to spill into the children you have or you will have or shall have. Somebody said amen. He's called the God of what? Of increase. Now, it used to disturb me. Am I poor? Am I struggling in certain areas? Because I'm among those ones who are never meant to make it. And what is it with those who make it well and are prosperous in the gospel? What is special with them that is not special with me? What have they done that I have not done? Oh, if I was then called to struggle and strive through life, then what is the essence of some of the things that I read? Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, whosoever shall believe. What are these things that I'm reading? How come they're not connecting to me, yet they seem automatic to certain individuals? And so I searched. And as I searched years ago, God gave me a wonderful revelation. Wonderful revelation. And when he did, he told me, exercise yourself in this. And your life will change for good. I knew what I'd received, and I started exercising myself over the same. And I can tell you now, as I'm speaking, I'm no longer in the exercise. I'm past the exercise. Some things in scripture are a persuasion. I am persuaded. You know, the time Paul says, for brethren, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. Give the Amplified of that. He says, but beloved, uh -huh, even though we speak this way, yet in your case, beloved, we are now firmly convinced of better things that are near to salvation and accompany it. When it comes to my salvation, now there are things I am persuaded over. I am overly convinced about them that what used to be an exercise to that place now is an ever-fixed state of mind and attitude. My mind has been attuned to that life. And when I attuned my mind to that life, I started seeing my life change for the increase, for the good, for the better, every other day of my life. Every other day. And I want to share that with you today. Now, when John is talking about Jesus Christ, which is the Son of God, he says something remarkable. He says that he that cometh is preferred before me, for he came before me. The God I'm talking about is preferred before me, for he was before me. When John looked at Jesus Christ, when John observed Jesus Christ, he saw a man that was coming and the man that was coming was before him as John. And he observed and said, that man is preferred before me. That means in all rights and privilege, he's ahead of me because he was before me. And in John chapter 3 and verses 30, he makes a very remarkable statement. It excites me even to think about it. He says, that one who is coming, he must increase he said but i must decrease he must increase but i must decrease he didn't say and i must decrease there wasn't a symbiotic transaction of the christ increases as john decreases that's what many people think but that's not so he did not say he must increase as i decrease it's not a symbiotic weight of scale that Jesus increases as you decrease or you increase and Jesus decreases. 
Listen, even if John increased, Jesus must increase. Let me explain this. When people are preaching about this scripture, many of them look at the space where John's ministry had come to an end, and because of that, it had to decimate, to deplete, to give opportunity for the ministry of Jesus Christ to take course, which in that regard also is true. Okay? It is what? It is true. But there's also another eye to see this from in this glass of revelation. And that's what I want to give you. That John the Baptist, the Bible says, was the greatest among them which are born of women. You remember? The Bible says there's not reason one greater than John the Baptist, which is existent, born of women. None born of women was greater than John. I want you to follow this. And Jesus said, and the least, the least in the kingdom, the Bible says, is greater than John. Are you following? Is greater than John. The least in the kingdom is greater than John. The least in the kingdom is greater than John. Now, when you become born again, you are already greater than any man that was greatest born among women. Why? Because the first man was natural, not supernatural. The Bible says, how be that that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and after that which is spiritual. The first man was a living soul. God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. Are you following me? Follow me, because you're going to love this. So if he, the first man, is a living soul, okay, he is a living soul. He is a natural man, not supernatural. Are you hearing me? He's not supernatural. He's natural. He's a natural man. Now, Matthew 11, 11 is telling us, that if we have to go in the natural man, in the man which is man, homo sapien, by nature, man born by women, and that includes seed of man, is greater than John the Baptist. That means he was the greatest that ever lived if anybody was born by a woman. You understand what I'm saying? And history has told us there was never one born by a woman, not born by a man. It's not, you understand? There's always that, except this one man called Jesus. He's born by a woman, but by the seed of God, the sperm of God. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, when he says that the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist, now John is in vision. He's looking at two realms and two natures of men. He's seeing a man with an elevated nature with a superior life in God. And he's looking at himself, even the greatest among them born by women. And then he realizes, now see it from this perspective, that which is human in nature must decrease. And that which is God kind in nature must increase. <laughs> Who has understood what I just said? And if you're a reader of the Bible, you'll realize that there are many instances, experiences in Scripture, where God has showed timeless times, times out number, one after another, experiences of how the things of this world are brought to nothing. Because nothing in the natural sense, without a supernatural experience, carries an eternal consequence. Are you following what I'm saying? They always have an expiry date. Look at wisdom. When Paul is speaking about the wisdom that we preach, 
He says, how be it we speak the wisdom among them which are mature, but the wisdom we are teaching, he says, is not of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught or come to nothing. Give me amplified of that. He says, how be it when we are among the full-grown spiritually mature Christians who are ripe in understanding, we do impart a higher wisdom, the knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden, but it is indeed not a wisdom of this present age, listen, or of this world, nor of the leaders and rulers of this age, who are being brought to nothing and are doomed to pass away. Do you know what that means? Anything that is of this world has an expiry date. Anything that touches the natural world, the natural sense, anything that appends to the natural world has an end. It will always be brought to nothing. If it is science, there is better science. The physicians of 2020 question probably how some men thought 200 years ago. Are you following me? The scientists of 2020 probably question how did men used to live without penicillin? Today when you watch television and see how they operate men with single little small things that are put into their system and cameras are moving and they make surgery, serious surgery, by just pricking a man's body. Back in the day they would have to cut. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because knowledge is increasing in every dispensation. One passes away and gives space for another. But he says, and all of that is brought to nothing. Kingdoms have come, the greatest they are, and they have gone before our eyes. Empires have come. If you are a reader and then you go and try to read about the Roman Empire, oh my God, the grandeur, the beauty, the power, the glory, the influence of that empire. Nobody ever thought that right now in 2020 we would have a discussion where we are not talking about a Roman Empire. Nobody in the world speaks Latin. It's gone. It's gone. It's no more. Whatever a man can do in the world has an expiry date if it is of the world. You see the richest men. One day it will all go. It doesn't matter how many cities they've built in the sky. One time you wake up and it sobers you to understand that everything you see has a nothingness to it. It has an end that takes everything away. Whether it's the understanding of this world, it will end. Whether it's the science of this world, it will end. Whether it's the wisdom of this world, it will end. Whether it's the glory of this world, it will end. The greatest leaders of history, they come and pass away and die. They go. So there is an ever fixed law in the universe that has committed itself to expire and wear out everything that exists in the natural realm and you have to awaken to that reality that all of these things will go away one day there will be no more they will be replaced by others and those others will be replaced by others bottom line is we produce children we leave they produce children too they leave and then they pass and then other children produce children and then generations come out of you those things are not eternally defining when they are of the natural sense but when you shift from the natural and come to the spiritual, there is also an equal law that commits the increase of things constant in this realm of God. That is why when he saw the increase of the righteous, he said, I will increase you, comma, and your children also, because this one is continual. Now, that's the eye through which John sees Jesus. He said, this man that I'm seeing, he must increase. But I must decrease. He didn't say, and I must. He says, but I must decrease. And he must increase. Because it's him. Now, if the Bible says that in him you live, in him you move. In Him, you have your own being. If the Bible says, in He that must increase, you live. In He that must increase, 
you move in he that must increase you have your own being it means when you become born again increase is a nature it's not a prayer it's not a prayer it's a nature he must increase and the carnal man must decrease that is why you're living an ever constant nature of dying to the flesh and living to the spirit you're growing by the spirit every hour of your life because you must increase and he must decrease every time the carnal senses are dying the spiritual senses are going up they are a must you must increase and we're talking about that we're not just talking about money we're talking about everything look at jesus jesus had a consciousness he devoted a consciousness he had a consciousness to everything that was around him to the world that he was around and everything that touched the physical realm and that's a mentality god wants you to construct in you and keep that mentality that thing that was in christ do you realize that jesus had to humble himself to be like a man that means by nature it took humility for him to try to fit in the ways of men every time he was among men he used to feel unfitting unequally yoked are you hearing me so don't be intimidated by anything in the world or anybody in the world no matter how great they are there is something on you that will always be bigger than them somebody shout hallelujah that's the mentality jesus had that's the mindset he had that he used to even do miracles and then tell people you know what please don't tell people why because he doesn't want to attract but sometimes he couldn't help so he finds himself doing miracles and then out of that he doesn't know what to do he doesn't know <laughs> oh, please don't tell anyone no oh, no but they have to tell why because they've seen a miracle but you see, this man was not showing off miracles. Oh, can I show you? Can I? No, no. Can I show off? No, 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 no. He wasn't showing off. In fact, he was hiding his power because it was too much. Why? He had a bigger picture to fulfill, a bigger miracle to do, and that is to purchase your eternal salvation. Somebody shout amen. And then you see this man raising up. And everything around him, like I always say, there is a universal law, spiritual, that everything in the world is interconnected. When Jesus walks on the road, the road knows this is Christ. And in instances of scripture, many a time you see Jesus do things out of the normal. And he commands certain things in the spirit that respond without explanation. One time they look for taxes. Peter comes and tells him we have no taxes to pay. Look at what the Son of God did. Comfortable. He didn't say, let's believe God. No. He says, go in the mouth of a fish. And there, cast your hook, get it out, get a piece of money, and take it and give it for me and you. Jesus paid taxes not only for himself, but for the fellow with him. That consciousness that the Son of God cannot lack money where there is a need of him. I wish some of you understand what I'm saying. I wish some of you understand what I'm saying. When you understand that, you will never worry about money ever again. And that's the life I've been living for many years now. From that day when it finally soaked in my head. I never worried about increase because I must increase. Go, you'll find a donkey tied, a colt of an ass. Tell them the master needs it. They go to a man who had raised this donkey for other plans and they just come to him. The master needs your donkey. He doesn't even ask who which one something falls on a man and he just unties a donkey and gives it to somebody because the son of god makes it that kind of glory that kind the bible says he increased in wisdom and stature and favor 
toward God and man. And then you find a believer saying, oh, I have a spirit of rejection. Yes. Rejection? Yes. There are actually people who have spirits of rejection. But they have rejection not because those spirits have power to superimpose themselves on them, but because they do not know the truth. And if I find a man with a spirit of rejection, I cast it out. Why? Because not everybody has the understanding, and we cannot lose people before they understand. There are people who say, no, we don't cast out devils, we're a new creation. Well, I tell people that's nonsense. Not everybody who sits in your meeting has the understanding. If I find a man without the understanding and he's possessed by a devil, I'll cast it out. Why? Because he might die the next day before he comes to have understanding. But the man I'm talking about, he increased in wisdom. That's why I said it's more than money. It's every aspect of your life. He said he increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor toward God and man. In him you live. In him you move. In him you have your own being. When you understand that, you wake up with a consciousness that I'm wiser today than I was yesterday. Somebody said amen. You wake up with a consciousness that I'm increasing in stature today than I was yesterday. You wake up with a consciousness that I, I am increasing in favor every other day. Listen, when I started exercising myself years ago into this persuasion and convincing, I told one time where God one time came years ago and told me, years ago, it should have been in 2013 or so, he came and told me from today, the sun will never go down and the man has not blessed you. And since that death, the sun has never gone down and the man has not put money in his hand. The sun has never gone down. The sun has never gone down without a man blessing his hand. The sun has never gone down without a man blessing his hand. Every time the sun comes up, I know something is falling on me. Every time the sun comes up, I know something is falling on me. The sun has never gone down. When you live that life of perpetual increase, that consciousness of perpetual increase, your results will start to show. Somebody shout amen. So, when you know that you're increasing in a favor, today you're more favored than you were yesterday. Tomorrow you're waking up in a greater favor. Next week you're waking up in a greater favor. Next year you're waking up in a greater favor. If that interview refused you last year, if it finds the favor of this year, it shall crumble and accept you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because it's a level of influence. It's a level of glory. It's a level. You have to increase. Every day I wake up to myself and I'm like, oh my God, I am favored more than I am. My name is mentioned on another table that it has never been mentioned before. Every other day, somebody subscribes to Fanero on Facebook or Twitter. There's a new person that will go on YouTube and say, I think I need to subscribe to this thing and get notifications. Somebody is visiting Fanero every day. Something adds on me. And it's a consciousness. It's a consciousness. My ministry cannot fail. It cannot fail. Not because two individuals left. It cannot fail. Ten will come for every man that leaves. You know why? Because I've exercised. Now get that and put it in your business. Get that and put it in your career. Get that and put it in your family. Get that and put it in your children. He said, and your children. He said, and your children. Once you understand the biblical benedictions of children, you realize that no born-again believer should have a failed child. No. And not an averagely surviving kid. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Your children will be special. They will be wise. They will be greater. He did not say to you only, he said unto your children also. Let me give you one. Let me give you one. Isaiah 61 verses 9, give me the amplified. He says, and their offspring. What does that mean? What is offspring? What is offspring? What is offspring? He said, and their offspring shall be known. Your children 
will not be known in the community. Your children will not be known in Nakasero. Your children will not be known in their schools. Your children will not be known in their universities. Your children will not be known in Kampala. He said, and their children shall be known among the nations. Your child will walk on the street and somebody will say, mm, this kid must be a child of a big person. Oh, and the Bible says, and all who see them in their prosperity will recognize and acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. That's what God has promised you. That people will look at your children and say, oh, 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 oh. there's something about this child. This child must be born by a certain man, a certain woman. The man that produced this child must know God a certain way. He said, and your children, all shall see them in their prosperity. The Bible says, Laban looked at Jacob and the fear of Isaac was on him. The fear of Isaac was on him. And the God of Abraham was on him. That's the only reason why he could not harm him. There was some way, don't worry about your children. Wherever they will enter, something will tell them this is Apostle Gracie. This is Rita's child. This is Robert's child. Listen, that is what God has promised. Do you know? Do you know? It has happened many times in my life where I'm walking somewhere and I see a kid and I see something on them. In fact, some of you, people have started making statements like, there's something about this boy, there's something about this girl. People have started making statements about your children. They're not just ordinary. People come and look at your child and say, there's something about this child. What do you think they're seeing? What do you think their eyes are seeing? Somebody shout, Amen. Shout glory to God. God can put something on your child. But even if your child is simply walking through a hotel lobby and you're not with them and somebody has never seen them, they just see a kid walking and they know there's something about that kid. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Refuse to raise funny kids. Isaiah 65 verses 23. Give me the Amplified. The Bible says, they shall not labor in vain or bring forth children for sudden terror and calamity. No. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. You will not bring children for sudden terror and calamity. You will not produce the wrong child. I said you will not raise the wrong one. Terrorists, those ones others will raise, not yours. Not yours. In fact, if your child does something funny, you tell them, this is not my child. I know who my child is. My children are not for calamity. My children can't die in a car accident. You can't hear that Apostle Prince's child hung on a tree and died. Not mine! And the devil knows it. These are things I've been praying over my children for years. You speak those words over your children. I'm blessed to have both biological and spiritual. So when I'm praying for you, I say nobody, nobody shall be for calamity. None of you shall be for sudden terror. When I'm talking before God, I say you shall be known in nations. God will cause something on your child that when they enter, they will be accepted and known. All who see them will say, this child. But you will start boasting. They say, eh, something about that kid, you tell them they're mine. <laughs> you know why they're like that? Yeah, they're mine. They're mine. They're mine. They came out of here. They came out of prayer. They came out of confession. They came out of a certain message. They came out of a certain understanding. They came out of a certain covenant. If you're a woman and you're planning to produce soon, put your hand on your belly now. Talk to them now and tell them, you children, you box springs that are coming out of here, in the mighty name of Jesus, you shall be for signs. You shall be for wonders. You will be potent. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
Ha, 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 ha. Glory to God. I claim that for my biological as I do for my spiritual. So if a member in this church, you just gave me a testimony. One time he prayed, he said, I'm submitted to a man who is submitted to you. You are telling God. And he says, for so we have many instructors, but a few fathers for through Christ have been begotten. If the man that begot me is not struggling, how can I struggle? The guy said. Now he told me something remarkable. He comes from five generations of poverty. Before that, he doesn't know anything. But he counted five generations. Even the grandfathers were talking about it. The guy came in this ministry. The Lord has prospered this fellow. Recently, he's just, I think, made 30. He showed me the house he's building in Munyonyo. I looked at the guy. I said, what? The fellow God has given wealth. He's moving nations. Now, his family, <laughs> some of his members of his family are saying that he is Illuminati. <laughs> God is going to bless you until people give you names. you until people give you names and they have built altars against the young man but to break the spirit that took away all their blessings <laughs> ah, apostle grace initiated him <laughs> oh my god god can make you so attractive that even the devil will want to own you <laughs> Praise God! So don't worry if they call you. Let them call. Let us read the word. Let us read the word. Wisdom is justified of her children. Somebody shout amen. And he's not the only one. I have another guy whose business just exploded. And now the family thinks that there's something he's doing to take their... That's so stupid. How can someone take your blessing? How? How can somebody steal a spiritual blessing? How? In the New Testament? In the New Testament? In the New Testament? Praise God. Praise God. If God can't take away the gift, eh? the giftings and callings of God are irrevocable. If God can't take away, how can a man take away? You understand what I'm saying? Jesus did miracles until the forces of darkness started owning him as a prince of Beelzebub. Because it was the only way Satan would stay relevant. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what I see. I see that some of you, the things that are going to work on you, you'll see. People in your home area will be the ones talking. That one got money. That one got blessings. They were initiated. <laughs> Somebody said, Amen. Glory to God. Because for us, prosperity is not privilege. It's a responsibility for the gospel. To preach the gospel. To fund the gospel. Are you hearing me? To look after the orphan and the widow. To build ministries for God. To occupy until he comes. Say, Amen. I was in Botswana. A lady came and helped me and said, you're my spiritual authority. The Lord spoke to me years ago. And she held me like that. So I blessed her and that was it. Now this woman sends me a testimony after a couple of months I left Botswana. She went to the hotel and told the hotel and said, I want to have access to the room where the man of God has been living. People have faith. Eh? People have faith. This was an act of faith. It was not an instruction. It was an act of faith. There is no teaching for that. So it's not in the realm of, you must, this was an act of. The lady said they gave access to my room where I was sleeping. I'd left already, flown out. That day I checked out. She enters that room. She said she went face down on that bed and said, Father, if the man I'm submitted to has seen you and he has been sleeping on just this bed, point of contact, my life changes from today. She spoke in tongues. The lady sends me a message after three months. 
everything changed. Everything. Now, I'm not saying that becoming crazy, taking our shoes, what? Mwe. Mwe. I'm not saying that. This was an instruction of the spirit, not a fanatic thing. Eh? Moenzo, you can be start becoming fanatic. Give me your hanky. Give me, ah, and they can't. My hankies are mine. But what I'm saying, she held to that. And her finances just boom. Now, everything in her life changed. She sent me a message to testify. But this was done to her according to her level of faith. Even if she didn't enter that room and claimed, you know, it's okay to claim God if you believe that he's working through that man. If you believe. If you believe. Because it's the God in the man you're connecting to, not that man. Listen, without the gospel, <laughs> I would be so ordinary. You understand what I'm saying? Now, don't lose the God thing because you might make us idols. So what the person was saying is they were trying to connect to some oil. Huh? Somebody sent me a message recently and said, my family is telling me that I should leave Fanero because there's no results in Fanero. I said, wait, 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 wait. Repeat that. Did you say no results in Fanero or with you as an individual? Sorry, I meant me. I said, aha. Uh -huh. You are the problem, not Fanero. So even if you leave Fanero, you're still a problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because by show of hands, how many of you honestly, don't, not lying, honestly, from the time you connected to this message, you have increased. Put up your hands. I want you to look at all of those hands. Huh? All of those hands that are up there. I want you to look at them and understand that it's your problem. Are you following what I'm saying? So can we meet and discuss it? And I said, I discuss what? The increase of Fanero or your problem? I told her there's nothing to meet over that. I cannot meet you over that. Why? I told her, look, the word is available. We meet and talk what? What am I going to tell you that I've not preached? When I stand on this altar, who do I point to every Sunday? Do I point to myself? Did I die for you? I point to Christ and him crucified. Just get back into your word. You have to find God for yourself. Our Uganda, leave those things of special prayer. Leave those things of special prayer. Find God in the Word. Come to church and write your, go back, sit into it and say, but this thing must work for me. I told you the story of a guy who earned hundreds of millions of shillings in just one bill. And then he finds me in the bank, he gives me a seat and says, Apostle Grace, <laughs> But people don't understand you. Then he says, <laughs> but people don't understand you. <laughs> they kept laughing. So asked, why did you say that? He said, there is one CD someone gave me, one like this. I was stuck. And I listened. And I made a crazy sentence, confession. And somebody flew from another country and came and gave me a contract of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions by faith. So I don't know whether the people you teach understand you. <laughs> Why? Because one man chose to take Jesus at his word. Just, it's the word. It's the word. It's okay to be called anything when it's working for you. It's bad when you're called an angel that it's not working. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor I'm increasing. More and more. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Amplified. He says, For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. Who is that? Jesus. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. The word there, government, is leadership. The essence of the Hebrew understanding of the government is one which is ahead of all. Ahead of all. He says, to be ahead of all shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Read the next verse with me. All of you, one, three, let's go. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. He said, when it comes to headship, when it comes to increase, 
when it comes to peace, touching his management, his ministry, the gospel, his saved people, his born again, he says that shall have no end. Not will, not could, not might. Shall have no end. The word shall means that there is a fixed command that must make it happen. <laughs> that means, that means, that means you increase at 30. You'll increase at 35. You'll increase at 40. You'll increase at 45. You'll increase at 50. You'll increase at 55. You'll increase at 60. You'll increase at 65. You'll increase at 70. You'll increase at 80. You'll increase at 90. You'll increase at 100. And when you're done and you're going home, it gets on your children. <laughs> And then they increase from childhood. He says there shall be no end. Every morning something increases on you. I tell people that's not a wish, it's not a prayer. It's a mentality you develop and it gets fixed. That even when you wake up and nothing has changed in the physical, you tell yourself something must have changed in the spiritual. And whatever has changed, even though my eyes can't see it, one day it will manifest. That is the thing which you find on individuals who are normal for one week, one year, two years, and on the third year they get a breakthrough. That will take some people 30 years to do. It means they were incubating. Something was happening in the silence. But people were not watching it. Are you hearing me? So those who see you with a physical eye say, but how come we don't see results? Mama! It's because they see the physical. Somebody shout hallelujah. Listen. We also sat on border borders. But we believed that something was shifting. I remember days I used to come from preaching. And I enter my hostel room. And I get cold water with one burn. Are you hearing me? And I would not say but God. I'm a servant of God. I should not be eating like this. Uh -uh. Something in me was telling me. Give it some time. Give it some time. Give it some time. Give it some time. One time I sat on a border border. And they had called me to preach. As one of those others who will preach. If the preachers don't turn up. A man invited me. I came on a border. When I reached the conference. Mama. My eyes were dust. My hair was dust. My shirt was dust. My shoes were dust. I began. I got the hanky. Woo, woo, woo. Pa, pa, pa. By the time I was done with the hanky to turn it the other side, the hanky got dirty. The whole of it when I was just cleaning half of me. And then there were men of God. I remember one of them had a Range Rover. And he said, young people, don't worry about money. You'll get money for these trousers like this. You'll get money. Then somebody shouted, amen. Then he got money from the pocket and gave it. I want you, you have understood it. I looked at the money they gave the girl and I said, let it sell a prior car. Have you been so intimidated before you even start preaching? Then my heart was like, but these ones who saw me coming on a border, what will I preach that they will understand? But there was something inside there telling me. You're bigger than even this. Recently, I found that particular man of God that preached in that conference. I met him. He didn't greet me. He refused. I suspected he's among those who think that I have snakes in my house, which is okay. I saw the car he entered. I thank God God has kept him. I saw the car parked outside. I saw the thing working on my life. You know, my brother, the one I follow, he told me, do you know why I finally followed your God? Yet he was born again. <laughs> he said, because everything you spoke when we were still sharing the room has come to pass. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your neighbor, speak! Yeah, 
speak, don't be apologetic. Even when you're working with your wife and you don't have a car, and then you see a nice car, tell her, what about that car? Do you like it? Eh? Speak. She told me that's the only reason why I followed your God. You spoke words and I've seen everything come to pass. Do you know how many people have followed Panero because of the words we spoke five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, when there was nothing? We're all on border border and torn open shoes. And then we spoke words and said, this is our nation. We are taking over. We are the biggest ministry Uganda has ever seen. Invest. Oh, with no camera, no piano, no choir. Munonya Arabica, tell your neighbor it's only a matter of time. Somebody thought, Amen. The word works. It works. One man came and told me, ah, now enjoy now because it is your season. Seasons come and go. I told him, not mine. Mine has no end, let me tell you. Let me say it such that you know it's deliberate. Even if I am 80, my ministry will be big. Even if I'm 70, my ministry will be big. Tell your neighbor I'm going somewhere. And he goes in the verse 7. He says, The increase of the government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it. God is not just intending to establish you. He wants to uphold you up there. Kept by the power of God unto salvation, not unto destruction. And the Bible says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. That means God is zealous for the wisdom to increase on you. God is zealous for money to come. God is zealous for revelation to come. God is zealous for righteousness to stand in your life. God is zealous for glory to stand and increase. God is zealous for signs, miracles and wonders to increase in your life. God is zealous for your marriage to work. He's zealous for your children to be in the best and have the best there is. God is zealous for your increase in every aspect. Isaiah 2 verses 2, the message version, he says there is a day coming when the mountain of God's house, how many of you know you're the house of God? You're the temple. He says, will be the mountain solid, towering over all mountains. And the Bible says all nations will river toward it and people from all over will set out for it. Next verse says they'll say, come, let us climb God's mountain, go to the house of the God of Lubega. He'll show us the way he works so we can live the way we are made. And the Bible says Zion's the source of revelation. That means that's the antidote as long as we keep the spirit of revelation as long as we keep teaching this message do you know how many men call me from abroad asking me when is your next crusade you saw how many people flew in from arizona india uk south carolina rwanda guys got buses for days from burundi to come flights just to be there to see the god of Rovega grace Ask my people at the office how many people come into the country every week to ask me questions on the gospel. What are you doing? How do you do it? Now they're inviting me to go in their nations and teach them how. What's the next meetings we're going to be doing across the world? You'll be amazed. I did not go to TBN. TBN came looking for me. Tell your neighbor we are going far. Hallelujah. People will come to you asking, how do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do business? 
how do you run ministry? How do you run marriage? How do you raise children? How do you serve? How do you live a morally upright life? How do you do it? God will make you a wonder. You will be teachers to nations, regardless of what you're doing in this nation. You will be teachers for the world. Somebody has received it. Now I want you to speak to God. Just bring the Spirit. Just bring the Spirit. King so come to my right. This is personal. Make it personal. Make a personal prayer. Whether you're speaking in tongues or in normal language, God is hearing you now. You are creating things in the eons, in the ages, in the periods and time. This is your Kairos moment. Opportunity is opening for you now.
ministries are blessed. Your finances are blessed. Your homes are blessed. Your careers are blessed. Your wisdom is increasing in the name of Jesus. Knowledge is increasing. Favor is increasing. Greatness is increasing. Understanding is increasing. Vision is increasing. Faster than it has done ever in your life. Receive that in the name of Jesus. Give him a mighty hand of praise. Now, if you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, you bring this one up to me. Say, Jesus, today I have heard your word. I give you my heart. I confess with my mouth that you should die for my sin. You are raised my glory tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior I'm born again. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at Kampala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.